we are going to be sharing information um, in our Retain and Employment First seminar series today, Myths and Facts, Hiring Persons with a Disability. And um, I will introduce our um, subject matter expert in a few minutes, but it's Dina Wilson Kimbler. And so the information that is in this presentation and accompanying materials is intended for informational purposes only and doesn't necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Employment First Council, University of Kentucky, Human Development Institute, or its individual employees. Although we attempt to provide accessible, accurate, and current information, no guarantees are made to that. And I'd like to let everybody know, we are very excited that our first in-person employer seminar series will take place uh, next month, June 14th. And it will be return to work and stay at work is good business, keeping your bottom line healthy. And Dr. Dennis McLean, who is one of our partners from Norton, will be presenting this um, at noon to 1245, uh, as I mentioned, June 14th at the Norton Healthcare Goodwill Opportunity Campus, the Goodwill Opportunity Center on West Broadway in Louisville. So um, I also put that information in the chat. There's a link to register if you're interested and are able to attend in person. Our goal is to be able to record this and um, open it up for, um, put it up on our Retain Kentucky Media website so that even if you can't attend in person, you'll be able to um, see the recorded version at a later time. And then in July, we will be back virtually. So save the date for our um, July 11th Employer Seminar Series for inter Innovative Supports for Autistic Workers, where Bev Harp from the University of Kentucky's Human Development Institute will share innovative ways to support the employment of people with autism. And I also put that link in the chat as well, um, if you would like to register for that, please do. We hope that you can join us. I will also be sending out a certificate of attendance um, following our meeting today for any of you that would like to submit that for um, CEUs to your credentialing body or for professional development as a community rehab program. So our objectives today will be um, to review common myths when hiring someone with a disability. And then we're gonna look at facts when hiring people with disabilities and talk about how we can all increase inclusion as well as accessibility in the workplace. So our presenter today is Dina Wilson Kimbler. Dina joins us from the Kentucky Office of Vocational Rehabilitation where she is an employer services branch manager and uh, Dina, I lost my view of my presenter notes, so I'm going to wing it here, but I'll ask you to fill in with anything else. But Dina um, joins us as a, a wife, mother, and avid gardener, and she shared some of the gardening um, a few minutes before we uh, got on that she's been doing in her yard over the weekend. And she is also a person who has worked very successfully as an individual with a disability. Um, helping people secure and maintain employment. And so she has a dual perspective, one as someone who is um, helping individuals with disabilities, but also someone who has negotiated um, accommodations on the job very successfully. So um, we're excited to have you here today as our uh, subject matter expert. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be here. And I would just, um, go ahead and have you share any additional information that you would like to, not just about yourself, but also about the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, so I'll just start out with a very brief um, overview of what we do at Voc Rehab before we get into the myths and facts. 
The Office of Vocational Rehabilitation serves all of the counties across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We assist persons with disabilities to find employment, competitive integrative employment. Um, we also would like for people to be able to move up in their jobs or gain valuable experience that will help them move up to other jobs later on. And we assist with retention services, um, on-the-job supports. We have work experience programs. Um, people meet when they become um, eligible for our services. They meet with a VR counselor and work with them to determine the best route, whether it's going straight into the workforce or training, licensure, um, furthering education. That's just a very brief nutshell of what we do here at VR, but in case anyone on here hadn't um, heard of us or wasn't too familiar with us, I just wanted to give a brief overview. You're also welcome to contact me with any questions or anyone in our agency. Thank you very much. We appreciate that information. Sure. And again, thank you for joining us today to share your expertise. So thank with that, we, <laughs> we will go right ahead and let you get started. Okay. So we will start out with a myth that is fairly common. Most disabled persons prefer not to work. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard that before. The fact is, um, the employment rate in 2023 was at an all-time high for working age persons 16 to 64 with a disability, 36.1% for women, 38.2% for men. And this um, was deemed from the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics annual report that they came out with um, this past February, and there's a link later on in our resources for that as well. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. And I did put that um, link in the chat also. Um, so if anybody wants to copy and paste all of those resources, they can do so. And um, this is really great data and it's very, um, very much uh, pertinent data for us helping people uh, return to work, stay at work, right. find jobs. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And then our next myth is disabled workers require too many accommodations. Um, I'm sure, again, some people have, have heard that or feared that if they hire someone who discloses they have a disability or what we call a visible disability where that you can see that without the person disclosing. Um, the fact is employers must only consider reasonable requests that do not re create undue hardship or direct threat to them um, and their business. And the link that Kimberly shares um, on this comes directly from the um, Americans with Disabilities Act website, the ADA, as we call it, website. Um, there is a lot more to that process of requesting accommodations, but honestly, um, there's no need to fear that someone needs accommodation. And so someone myself who has several disabilities and I have worked with my HR and my upper leadership um, to help me be able to continue working full time, I required very few accommodations and the few that I did were easily put in place and have allowed me to continue working, so. That's great. And we've also seen that um, an accommodation for one individual may very often positively impact other workers as well. So it could increase safety for all workers. Um, yeah. Universal design measures are another way that an accommodation can be made across the board. Um, we see productivity increase and we see morale increase because everybody's feeling good about what the company's doing. So, um, so thank you for calling that out and, um, you know, talking about the reasonable accommodation. And um, so I, I appreciate that. I, learned within the last couple of years specific to the undue hardship, kind of taking it a step further that um, it can't, um, an accommodation should not only um, be good for, uh, or not create an undue hardship for the employer, but also for other workers as well. So I think that's something that an employer has to take into consideration if it impacts other workers or people that they provide services to as well. So um, that was something that I hadn't um, 
known, I guess, in the past, it was that you that it went to that level as well. And I should add here also, um, my team of employment specialists are located across the entire state, and we can provide um, training on these subjects with the ADA to employers, um, their HR staff, their hiring managers, um, whomever they would like us to speak with. It can be virtual or in person, but we, we can provide that as well. That's a really great um, service to have. Um, So it's free to employers. I think a lot of times people think OVR is for the person who is coming to you for the direct service provision, but employers can get Mm -hmm. services from OVR as well. And the fact that you can do it virtually or in person Mm -hmm. is great. Um, I think employers would feel very comfortable coming to an organization like your employer services um, to be able to access that. Awesome. Okay. So another myth, hiring persons with a disability causes more expense to the employer. Kimberly, did I just jump on your slide? I believe I did, didn't I? I want to make sure I didn't overstep your slide. No, this is okay. yours. You're going to make a hundred percent for sure on that one. Okay, so um, hiring persons with a disability causes more expense to the employer is our myth. The fact is, many agencies, like our own, with vocational rehabilitation, exist to help offset costs for persons with a disability to perform the essential duties required of their job. And again, in the ADA and with a handout that Kimberly is going to um, send with the, I'm sorry, um, that she's going to send with the um, credential that she's sending out for today's training to everyone, the ADA also clearly defines essential duties um, required of a job. So that that is... um, that is very clearly defined in there for you guys as well. It may alleviate some worries or concerns that you would have um, about that fact. And I think the other thing that we um, we have found is that not only are there a lot of agencies and organizations like mm-hmm. um, OVR, there's um, we have CATS, the Center for Assistive Technology that sits at um, HDI, and then also CATS with a K um, that is throughout the state. And both of those um, links are in the chat as well um, that can help offset some of those costs if somebody needs um, an accommodation to perform the essential duties required of their job. Um, one of the things that we found at Retain is oftentimes um, people may not be aware of exactly what the essential duties of their job are and may ask for an accommodation for something that really isn't an essential duty. And therefore, Mm -hmm. you know, they may not even have to be worried about that, Mm -hmm. doing that job. Um, I've seen people who have really just kind of picked up extra tasks because they're helping a coworker or Mm -hmm. they thought it was a part of their job and it really wasn't. And so that's something else that um, I don't know if you've seen that, Dina, where (laughs) I think it's important for everybody to to get a copy of their job description and to know Mm -hmm. what the essential functions of their job are. Absolutely correct. And and that's another thing that, that our office particularly helps employers work with. Um to find out even before we assist you to fill positions, what are the essential duties required of the job? Um, so we can we can know that up front with air consumers is what we call our clientele. And uh, so then we can match you with qualified applicants to perform those jobs. Um, but yes, I've, I've seen that happen several times too, Kimberly. And I'm gonna stop and see if anybody has any questions. I would invite Um, you, if you have questions for Dina, to go ahead and put those in the chat. Um, And yes, we will be sending out a certificate of attendance for everyone that um, attended today. So that was one of the questions, but feel free to put any other questions that you might have in the chat and we will answer those for you. 
And I had mentioned HDI cats as a resource um, that can help people um, if you're looking for assistive technology in um, the process to, um, to be able to be accommodated on the job. And HDI CATS mission is to help Kentuckians with disabilities have access to that assistive technology. Um, they can offer a lending, a lending library of assistive technology devices for checkout, demonstration of those devices and categories of AT and assistive technology, and then also training opportunities around uh, assistive technology and the relevant legislation um, that it may fall under, such as the Americans with Disabilities Act. Oh, this is a great question. What is the best way for an employer to reach OVR in Kentucky, Dina? Let me get myself off mute there. I apologize. Mm -hmm. There is actually the link to our website um, as it comes up later on in the presentation, unless Kimberly, you may have already put that in the chat. Um, and then also um, you can find each local office um, on that website for your particular county. And then you are more than welcome to reach out to me. If it's not a question for me, I will put you in touch with the correct person. My phone number and email will also be on here um, as well. So any of those ways, the website, the phone or email. Perfect, thank you very much. That's very helpful. So as um, Dina and I were preparing for today and just talking about myths versus fact, um, the, the one that um, she talked about is, uh, you know, companies oftentimes think that costs will increase. And we've very um, specifically heard from employers that they think maybe their insurance costs will increase if they hire individuals with disabilities. And so um, we did find some data that indicates otherwise. It was a survey of human resource managers conduct conducted by Cornell University that found that companies' health, life, and disability insurance costs rarely rise because of hiring employees with disabilities. And um, the link um, is in the chat and it's here um, from Washington University. Um, they said, however, the, um, the prevalence of people continuing to think um, those attitudinal barriers continue. So um, that's what we really need to get rid of, right, are those attitudinal barriers. But it helps to have these um, surveys that show employers are finding that their costs are not rising specific to health, life, and disability insurance. And just a quick blurb in there, too. Um, you know, not everyone who has a disability receives Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI. However, those who do can get what is called a benefits analysis through voc rehab or other sources uh, at no cost to them. And it will tell them exactly what they can make per month and continue to keep their insurance and sometimes their benefits as well. And, um, you know, usually there's a steady increase in that over the years of how much they can even make per month. So sometimes there's no cost at all to employers um, for the insurance. So I just wanted to throw that in. It's kind of an interesting fact Ooh. as well. Yeah, that is a great, that is a great point. So thank you for um, mentioning that. Perfect. All right, I think it's back to you, Dina. All right. So another myth is communicating with a person who has a disability may be difficult on the job. The fact is simple things like passing notes, using as an, an interpreter, which does not have to always be an official interpreter. It could be a family friend or, um, or a friend. Sorry, I said that wrong. A family member or a friend, um, possibly for something like the interview or something like that, giving audible instructions or using a translator. Um, those are some things that um, are listed uh, actually on the ADA website as um, well as I believe the resources down at HDI at the University of Kentucky as well. Um, <clears throat> but to break it down just a bit, Sometimes people learn learn things differently. So maybe they do not learn as well with verbal instructions. They need a written sheet until you know they they get the job started and and kind of get in a habit and and learn the flow. 
um, or vice versa. Maybe they do not learn well by a list um, and they need to hear the instructions. They may learn better hands on. So sometimes it's, you know, with agencies like ours, we know a lot of those things up front and we can help the employer without it being a stutter stop process. When they hire someone, we know those things up front with their clients and we can assist you with those things. But the communication is is generally not as much of a barrier as people think. Um, you know, there's so many things available from free um, apps on Apple and Android and, and Google Play, um, you know, out there right now that can can help at no cost at all. And, and many people with disabilities are already aware of those. So they may bring those to the workplace to help with communication. And I think this is another area where it positively impacts everyone in the workplace, you know, to, to use those inclusive communication mm -hmm. techniques. And um, we have talked about mm -hmm. in, in past employer seminar series, um, some companies will, um, will occasionally or in the onboarding process ask people, you know, how mm -hmm. do you like to be, how do you best communicate and how do right. you like to be communicated right. um, with. And that's really helpful too. We've had, um, we've shared something called the Biodex <laughs> user manual where people mm -hmm. talk about, you know, how they like to communicate and, and how they like to work in groups or work individually. And right. um, I think that really speaks to this communicating with yes. everybody um, and, 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 you know, in an inclusive manner really just benefits everyone. And it brings a point you brought up earlier, too. Employers do not always know everyone in their employee list that has a disability. Some people do not disclose. They just try to make it through and uh, or they self-accommodate in some way. But when you are providing or working through agencies like mine and Kimberly's to help with these things like communication and other things, other employees who need that type of assistance may see that it boosts morale. It gives them hope that they can be helped too. So there's, there's just so many things that this type of inclusivity can bring positives to the workplace. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and the other thing you and I talked about, um, and, and I think you mentioned earlier is that, um, you know, if the disability is not a visible disability, then oftentimes, you know, people, employers or, or coworkers aren't aware of it either. And I think we've gotten um, better at talking about things mm -hmm. like mental health and people, you know, um, coming <laughs> forward when they do need an accommodation. But um, that's something to keep in mind too. Sometimes, you know, people aren't aware that someone yes. has a disability because it's not visible. And it can be chronic illness or disability too that isn't visible. Just a few would mm -hmm. be a back problem or carpal tunnel or, you know, things like that or something happened from a car wreck years ago that's now bothering the person, but you do not see it visibly at all. It's just something they deal with every day. So, Absolutely. So we also wanted to highlight advantages to hiring a worker with a disability. And um, this also comes from Washington University where they found that workers have insight on how to serve customers and clients with disabilities that, um, with, that a worker without a disability may not have that perspective or insight. It also provides greater diversity and increased perspectives in the workplace and studies have found that that increases the retention rate of all workers, as well as we've talked about this productivity. And um, the last bullet here speaks to how it benefits the public media and we're going back to communications again, the communications across the board. So these are just a few ways that hiring workers with disabilities can um, be an advantage. And I'm seeing lots of requests for certificates. We're just gonna go ahead and send certificates out to everybody who attended today. So you don't need to put your name in the chat. We'll get those to you uh, probably in about a day or so. I wanted to share if you have not had the opportunity to see um, 
previously the definition of an inclusive workforce that we've created as part of our um, Retain Kentucky project and our inclusive worker health leadership network has been um, talking about this for quite some time now, but an inclusive workforce is one in which the unique skills, contributions, and diversity of qualified individuals, including those with disabilities, are actively recruited, valued, and integral for success. It's an environment where the engagement, development, retention, and advancement of increasingly skilled and diverse workforce is promoted and supported across all employment sectors and levels. And this is something that, um, you know, we, a lot of our employer partners um, really strive to this inclusive workforce. And um, so I wanted to make sure that I shared this. And um, if you want to get additional resources, our um, Retain uh, website, I put in the chat as well, but it's kyretain.org. And uh, Dina mentioned her contact information as well as the Kentucky Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. And I'll make sure that um, that we, if it's not already in the chat before we close today, I will get this information in the chat. But um, Dina's contact information is here and she put the website for Voc Rehab, which I've used that um, on a number of occasions. It's really great. You can go in there and as, as she has here, the local office numbers are also included. So you can um, find out where you would receive services based on um, where you reside. But the other thing, Dina, if you could just confirm this, I know, um, we've had participants in retain who have been able to meet once they get an assigned counselor, um, everything can be done virtually. Is that still the case with OVR services? If the consumer, which is what we call our clients, mm -hmm. um, if they are okay with that, if they request to meet virtually, um, it can just be a personal choice. It could be due to their disability, whatever reason. Yes, we can meet virtually. Um, we do require some signatures. We can send things by DocuSign electronically. We can send in regular mail, snail mail. Um, but yes, and I should have said also on this last part about the website, um, the local office phone and addresses are included when you look it up by county. So um, <laughs> just wanted to say that. And then also, um, once you go through our referral process, which is very, it's not complicated to fill out, just answer a few questions basically um, by phone, by calling one of our offices um, or coming in, you can... Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought when I had to clear my throat, guys. <laughs> Getting right here at the end and I'm mm -hmm. I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also um request it when you come in um to the office or you when you call in, you can tell at that time that you would prefer to meet virtually for the time being. And you can request that that's the only type of work that you're looking for if you prefer remote work. We we have very individualized um you know, services, no matter if, if two people have the same disability or disabilities, it doesn't matter. Everything's very individualized and we do a lot of employer outreach. Um, that's a huge part of what we do at VR. We want to build that rapport and relationship so that we can provide candidates to them. So, but all of that information is there and every, what I was going to say, I'm sorry, our, okay. our VR workers, our VR counselors um, may be located in an office that's not in that county, but it serves that county. So we do come to the person's county to meet. Um, so the clients or employer does not have to come to our office um, per se. We can go to them. So, Okay, great. And we had um, Jeff asked in the chat if you have good, legitimate um, resources for remote work? We we do have some. Um, my team in particular, they really try to vet those services that we find online or in the papers or wherever we find them. Um, we do our best to assure that those are legitimate sources um, for work and legitimately are <clears throat> the job, salary, whatever is listed on the ad. We try to reach out to them with those employers either in person or by phone or by email um, 
<clears throat> so that that's how we try to do our best to vet those. Of course, some do get through the cracks, but you know, for the most part, we can vet to to find the legitimate work from home resources. Great. Let's see. Oh, Jeff said thanks. The other thing, Dina, that um I was thinking of while you were talking for employers or other people who may be joining us today who aren't aware, I mean, not only can individuals get services through OVR as can employers, but you also partner not only with Retain, because I know you all were referred to us at Retain to help um, people stay at work and return to work, but you also refer to community rehab program providers, um, many of whom are on our, our um, webinar today, who can help employers retain those valued employees, maybe through uh, job coaching services or, you know, supports that can help them either on site or I know some of the job coaches do it job coaching virtually too, after the person mm -hmm. has, you know, completed their shift or whatever. So I think um, that's important for employers to know if somebody's struggling and maybe they need, you know, the help of an OVR counselor who then would refer to a community rehab program provider who can come on site or provide those support services virtually. So I don't know if you want to expand upon that at all. Um, we have a CRP or Community Rehabilitation Program branch. Um, <clears throat> when someone becomes eligible for our services, the VR counselor works with them to provide the counseling and guidance. And many times it comes to light during those meetings um, that the person may need more support on the job or with the job than my team normally would provide. And sometimes that is job coaching. Sometimes it's someone being on the job with that person daily or occasionally, or as you said, virtually, um, just to maintain um, retention of the job and success. So um, that is a, a very important resource. I'm glad you brought that up, Kimberly. Um, and it's a wonderful branch, great, great folks that work with them, great manager over that branch, uh, very easy to work with. So I, I definitely encourage using those services if need be. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so Julie said, thanks for the great presentation today. I work for careeronestop.org, U.S. Department of Labor Employment website. We have a job finder tool that includes a filter for remote jobs only that consumers might find useful. So thank you, Julie. That's a great resource. Um, so thank you so much for putting that in the chat as well so everybody can access that. Absolutely. I work with Julie. I'm on um, I'm on a team with her that's a national team and um, their website is a wonderful tool. It has a lot of um, information on jobs on it, resume. Um, it's free. So I, I do agree that is a wonderful resource. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's an, an added bonus takeaway that we didn't plan for today. Right. So perfect. Thank you, Here, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Here are all the um, uh, resources that um, I believe are already in the chat. Um, and uh, we can also, we will send these out with the um, certificate of attendance that everybody will get following today's um, webinar. Give us, like I said, a, a day or so to get those out to you. I also just wanted to share that we um, are... Um, providing services through Retain Kentucky to individuals who are 18 or older and live in Kentucky. They are either currently employed or have worked in the last 12 months and their injury or um, illness may, um, must not be work-related. So you might notice in the past, we've said that they can't have applied for or received SSI or SSDI. That's no longer the case. So when you talked about that earlier, Dina, I was like, oh, I'm excited to be able to share that we can now serve individuals who are receiving SSI or SSDI. So please keep that in mind if you're an employer or um, a workforce development individual, a community rehab program provider, and you have people who have who are 
have applied for or are receiving SSI or SSDI, we can now serve those individuals at Retain Kentucky. And we can do that in collaboration with all of you. Um, we work in collaboration with OVR, who is um, our lead for the Retain Kentucky grant. And we can work with you if you're a community rehab program provider or other workforce development professional, employer, healthcare provider. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, our contact information, phone number is here, 859-562-3251. You can email us at retain at uky.edu. Our website is kyretain.org. And we also have um, a participant screener that people can scan our QR code or go to our website um, and you can find this and they just have to answer the eligibility criteria. And then it takes them to our intake um, queue where someone from our intake team will reach out to them. And we're really good about reaching out within a couple of days and getting the process started. I did also want to remind everybody, um, we are in partnership with Employment First Kentucky. So this is their um, website, www.employmentfirstky.org, if you'd like to find out more about Employment First as well. And then with that, I would just like to say thank you everyone for joining us today. 